I'm going to use this video to quickly go over a few problems that we did at the end on Friday, some more complex problems. A small fish is dropped by a pelican that is rising at 0.5, uh, actually this should say meters per second, and that should be meters, but all right, so, and after 2.5 seconds, what's the velocity of the fish? How far below the pelican is the fish? Well, this problem is... Uh, complicated for a couple reasons, although it doesn't appear to be at first. I was yelling a lot on Friday about making uh, pictures, uh, so here we go. This is my picture of the bird, and there is the fish. Excellent. And that fish is going to drop down, and that bird, as it says right here, is in fact going to rise up from the original spot. So I'm going to make the original spot zero here. I'm going to make up positive and let's see what we can do with that. To begin with, the question is, first part of the question is about the fish. So I'm going to make sure anytime there's two objects in a problem, I'm going to be very careful about what it's asking for. This says the velocity of the fish. So I'm going to make a set of variables for the fish. VI, VF, acceleration, time, and displacement. Alright, now what I'm looking for is the velocity of the fish after 2.5 seconds, so that's what I'm looking for, velocity final here. And that's going to be after 2.5 seconds. I know because it's in free fall, anytime it's not being uh, attached to any other object and just gravity is allowed to work, then it's 9.81. Oh, oops there. Let's fix that. Uh, 9.81. That is Terrible writing. Fix that. Okay. And uh, also, the, come one of the beginning tricks is the initial velocity. It says dropped, so that typically leads us to believe zero, except it also says that the pelican is currently rising at 0.5 meters. In most situations where our object has been dropped, the original object that dropped it was also not moving. So in this particular case, it's dropped, but it's already at 0.5 meters. So just as if I were walking along here with a tennis ball, if I were traveling 2 meters per second, so is the tennis ball. So in this particular case, the pelican is rising, but it contains the fish. Therefore, the fish is rising at 0 0.5 meters per second. So for a little bit of time here, just a small, small amount of time, once the fish is let go, it's going to rise a little bit in order to stop moving, and then it's going to come back down this way. Now, we don't have to worry about that in kinematics because the math takes care of that. So the first problem here is pretty simple because all we have to do is find the equation that has these four things, the three that I have and the one that I'm looking for. And that's simple. That's going to be the VF equals VI plus A delta T. That's going to be 0 0.5 meters per second. I have to be careful here with my units. That's negative 9.81 meters per second squared. I'm running out of room times 2.5 seconds. And my final answer should be negative 24.03 meters per second. Now, a lot of people have been asking me about how to round. In all honesty, uh, I don't worry too much about sig figs after the first chapter, so two decimal places is a good standard to stick by. All right, now the next question is how far below the pelican is the fish? Now, most people see this and just see how far did the fish drop. And if that were the case, the answer would be right here, delta x. But unfortunately, it doesn't say how far does it drop from its original spot. It says how far below the pelican is the fish. And if you remember from the beginning, the pelican is rising at 0.5 meters per second. So that means I'm going to have to find this displacement here, which is the pelicans, and this displacement here, which is the fishes. So when I drew this picture originally, I tried to be very careful to draw this, which is the displacement of the fish during this time, and this, which is the displacement of the pelican. Now, obviously, I don't know exactly what that is, but this is a visual representation of how much there should be. All right, so let's start off with delta x here. I can use any equation with delta x in it. Uh, the one I'm going to use is vf squared equals vi squared plus 2 a delta x. 
Um, you can, like again, you can use anyone you want, but you do have to be careful here in this case of uh, set negatives. BI squared, nothing canceled in that case. So divided by 2a is equal to delta x. Vf is, of course, the what I just found, which is negative 24.03 meters per second. One of the main reasons I just chose this formula is so that I could demonstrate for you that this negative will cancel and that this next negative right here will not. <coughs> now, my initial velocity is 0 0.5 meters per second. That's going to be squared divided by 2 times negative 9.81 meters per second squared. And when that's all done, your final answer here should be negative 29.41 meters. One second while I get a little bit more room here. Alright, I just took the work for that what we just did and I moved it over here on the side. And as I just pointed out, this is not enough only because the pelican is moving at the same time. So I'm going to come up with a set of variables for the pelican. Now that's easier to do because it's moving at a constant velocity. The With a accelerating object you have to use all three. With a constant one, with our pelican here, we'll just use that to represent the pelican, I can just use V, delta X, and delta T. My V is of course 0 0.5 meters per second, delta T is 2.5 seconds, and now my constant velocity equation, which we learned at the very beginning is V equals delta X over delta T. And I'm just going to move that around so that delta X is equal to V times T, which is equal to 0 0.5 meters per second times Let's go with uh, 2.5 seconds for a total of 1.25 meters. So the last tricky thing on this is the fact that you see a negative there and you see a positive there and the temptation is just to add the two numbers and to get a negative number which would be like negative 28.1, I think 6 or something like that. So, uh, but that's not the case because these are in fact distances that we need to add. So I'm going to add the absolute value of that when I add those two numbers together, my final answer is 30 point, uh, I believe that's 66 meters. Again, just a couple decimal places. And there's your final answer.